I think that artifacts are easily the most complex and confusing part of Genshin Impact for new players. Speaking for myself, it took me months to really figure out what was going on. So the first thing I want to say is take a deep breath, relax, you're doing fine, and rejoice because today I'm going to go over all your most burning questions regarding artifacts in Genshin Impact, and you're going to leave this video knowing exactly what to do so you never have to worry about artifacts again, I hope. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Is there a good strategy to artifact grinding for people just starting out? I get intimidated by the idea of trying to get the right main stats with good substats with the right set. Totally understandable. If you are just starting out, you're pre-AR45, you're pre -AR 45, you don't even worry about artifacts. If you're not AR40, 45, don't even look at them, don't even think about it. If it seems like it's beneficial, equip it, maybe look for some ER if your characters need bursts uh focus on the set bonus actually like a two like exile two piece energy recharge very nice berserker maybe even a, do a couple runs of viridescent to get a four star set but other than that you don't even worry about artifact once you do start farming artifacts when you're just starting out remember you have nothing so anything is better than nothing i like to use the spiral abyss as sort of a benchmark when i'm new and so you try and look for the right main stats pretty much don't worry about sub stats at all and remember, anything you get is better than nothing. So you get the right main stat and their awful substats, level them up. It's fine. I would recommend taking things to level 16 and stopping there. The the similar to leveling a character to, from 80 to 90 is often not worth it for new players, except for very specific types of teams. Taking an artifact all the way to 20 is usually not worth it until you're really pushing your account to the final the final push to end game. But level 16 at first is fine. Just worry about main stats is fine. And when you're looking at crit rate and crit damage, it's this is often the biggest bottleneck that separates a, 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 a character in team that can really push Abyss to floor 11 and floor 12 versus not. And often it's really hard to get a high amount, like over 100 crit damage and over 50 crit rate. That's really sort of what we're looking at when you really want to see your character actually progress far into the spiral abyss is at least 50 to 100 and it can be really really difficult because you just haven't had enough stats to work with artifact quality is inherently rng so you often can't control the kind of crit stats that your artifacts roll so you either do one of two things you get to that crit ratio of 50 100 and just aim that every artifact upgrade you get kind of improves that ratio until you get to a certain point which we'll talk about more later or you just ignore crit rate and crit damage and go for attack or whatever your character scales off of and just go for building attack elemental damage bonus etc so that's for new players, overworld players. That's sort of what I recommend to do. Once you start pushing the end game, I recommend first watching, it's one of my most popular videos, you'll never farm artifacts the same way again. My full artifact guide, I go through the strategy of the best sets and stats to farm, the mindset behind it. You wanna find efficient artifacts, artifact domains that can build up multiple of your characters at once, and then use the artifact strong box to flesh out the rest of your sets and utilize two piece, two piece sets, like some characters I have will probably never leave two piece two piece because they're just I have such good good stats from the two piece two piece that I, I never want to leave um, a two piece two piece so but we're just getting started there's a lot more to talk about and we'll get into it right now when are your artifacts good enough when are they good enough for the overworld for clearing abyss 11 or 12 and for a 36 star of floor 12 well for overworld the main thing that you want for your artifacts is just enough ER for your burst reliant characters if you're using Shangling in the overworld you want a ton of of ER. Same with Yalan, same with Bennett, same with Sing Cho, etc, etc. Any character that relies on their burst, having enough ER is the number one most important thing because their kit basically doesn't matter if you can't get their burst up. Whereas other characters, you know, Kaching, Ganyu, Navia, whatever, they don't need to worry about ER. So you basically don't need to worry at all for the overworld unless you're having trouble clearing bosses. Like the overworld is not a big, not a big deal. Um, and you kind of want to follow the advice I gave earlier, either ignore crit rate or have enough to actually crit some Sometimes. So either ignore crit rate entirely and just go for attack or whatever stat that they scale on, or at least go for 50, 100. If not hitting 50, 100 crit isn't really doing that much. At least in my experience, that's sort of the start of the break point. And then 60, 120 is usually my minimum. That's what I would usually go for, for clearing abyss 11. My main stats, I look for a 60, 120 crit ratio if they're a DPS. And then I look for some other good substats here and there. So obviously you need the ER. And then I want to see at least that 60, 120 ratio 
ratio in the stat line. You can obviously go above on either on either side, but that's personally the minimum that I go for. Now, I want to get this out of the way early. Crit isn't everything, but the reason why I've been talking about crit so much so far is because if you don't have any crit, you're going to really struggle. I personally like to look at it like this, and I know this is kind of a super nerdy example, but you guys know that a square has the most surface area. Like if you're trying to make a fence and you're trying to make the biggest, get the most area inside the fence as possible, like both of these squares have the same perimeter, right? They have the same amount of fence, but the area inside is bigger if you make a square. And that's sort of how artifact rolls are. If you think of one length being your crit rate and crit damage and another length being your attack or your em or whatever other stats that work with the character if your crit rate is zero and you have all these other stats then your overall damage you know relating to area is going to be smaller but if you sort of balance it out and you have a more equal amount on both sides using the same amount of substats you can get more damage total and this works inversely as well if we look at a character like hu tao and i'm using her on the marish say artifact set i have a lot of crit like a lot a lot a lot and my hp a little bit low now i do run her with double hydro so she gets up to 30k hp but if i were looking to upgrade my hu tao and say i had another choice for a pyro damage bonus if I could take additional crit or additional HP, I might actually be better off going for additional HP because my crit from not only the actual stats I have giving lots of crit rate crit, but the weapon I have gives me crit and the set bonus gives me crit. Crit is becoming, you know, really heavily featured on my Hu Tao and HP is a little bit neglected. So this is a point where HP might be objectively more value than crit. But there's also a lot of cases where people strictly look at crit value and don't look at the other stats. So now we look at this piece on my Hu Tao, lots of crit rate, lots of crit damage. And then we look at this piece. Well, strictly speaking, this one has more crit, but this one has a lot more EM. So we're going to switch right over to here. We've lowered our crit rate and crit damage, but increased our EM. This will be a better piece for us overall. Actually, I think we found, I think I had some better artifacts I could put on here. Yeah, now we're cooking. Anyways, all this to say is that yes, crit is not the only thing that matters, number one. The other stats really matter as well. But two, oftentimes the majority place that you can get crit is from your artifacts. Like if we're talking about something like HP, we can get HP, additional HP from Hydro Resonance. We can get attack from especially something like Bennett's buff. We can get attack from Tenacity of the Millilith, from Noblesse Oblige. There's more opportunities to buff attack. There's very few things in the game that can actually buff crit rate and crit damage. So getting a baseline crit rate and crit damage is very important. This is not what I would consider a normal baseline. I know I'm going to have people complaining about me flexing my artifact, right? This is some some sort of baseline, right? 55 to 132, some sort of relatively achievable sort of low low to mid end build, right? The reason why I want to get this crit rate up and I'm going to keep farming emblem to get this crit rate up is because there's no way to buff my signature's crit rate, at least currently in the game right now. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if we get a future, you know, maybe the pyro archon will give everyone like 100 crit damage or something. And then all of a sudden it completely changes the way we build our characters now we don't now the mari should say artifact set is like way worse because or maybe it's way better or maybe it gives she gives like 50 crit rate or something like that and now all of a sudden if you run her and the mari should say set your over on crit rate right that could happen in the future but right now it's not what happens right now crit is usually the lacking thing for new players so although i've seen this floating around you know count the useful substats you should have six useful substats on your feather and flower four on your sands three on your goblet three on your circlet i think this is this is good. I think this is a nice way of looking at things, but I don't think it should be your be all end all way of looking at things. I think you kind of eventually have to learn what your characters need and build off of your own standards. And so what I, what do I mean by that? I think that this is good at communicating that your flower and feather are on average going to be twice as good as your circlet and your goblet and your sands. Is, your, I found sands almost as tricky as, as circlet and goblet, depending on the sands you need. And this is definitely useful. It's better to count useful substats than only crit. But the word useful substats is doing a lot of heavy lifting because if your crit rate is too low, if your crit rate is like 30 or 20 or 40, then stacking on a lot more EM and HP is not as good as getting that crit rate up. Like really not as good. So anyways, clearing Abyss 12, clearing Abyss 11, getting some of 12, having the right main stats, some other good stats here and there. But to 36 star, you want that really good crit ratio, you want it on good sets, and you want lots of good other, other stats. So the, my 
ride and build is very, very good. And it's not just because of the crit. I've also got two rolls of attack. I've also got one roll of attack here. This one is useless. This one's useless, but there's lots of crit. And this one, the rest is useless. So it's, it's at least my feather and flower, as predicted, are have more useful stats. But once you get to this level of build, it's a bit beyond. Maybe we should look at this one instead. He's got some attack here. Got some HP that's useless. EM is useless. And that's less Sunny Lu team. There's Goblet that has attack, which nice. Um, attack is like for a character that scales off of attack, attack is almost as good as crit, assuming you already have a decent crit ratio. And I would say a decent crit ratio is maybe 70, 140. And once you get to that point, like, and that's including all of your stats, like what you see on the stat page here, 70 crit rate, 140 crit damage. Once you get there, additional crit or additional attack or other useful stat are about equal. And I, I don't say about equal as like a, ma a a total mathematical thing. It's mostly just for you to think about when do I not need to use crit? Because if your stats are 5, 140, additional rolls of attack are not equal to crit at all. When does it exactly converge and even out? It's really hard to say. That would take a lot of math. And frankly, it's sort of pointless because your stats, you don't get to choose your stats. They're going to be random. You don't know what they're going to be. So you kind of have to take what comes and make the best of it. And in general, once you reach 6120 or 7140, then you can stop worrying as much about crit and just looking at useful stats overall. That's my recommendation. But my other recommendation is, is to just set your own baseline, right? If, because the next question, well, and we'll talk about, well, well, or, you know, there's still a lot to unpack here. If it hasn't quite hit home yet, I think it's going to with the next few questions. How to know when to lock artifact? Like, how do I, how do I choose to lock this? No, how do, why didn't I lock this? Why did I lock this? Whatever. And the first answer is it depends on what you need. The more you need the set, the lower your standards should be. The better the alternatives to that particular artifact, the higher your standards should be. So for me, I already have a couple good st good sets for the golden troop. Like just, just I already have really good sets. And in particular, I have really good, um, I have really quite good feathers for the golden troop. So personally, I have really high standards if to, to level any more golden troop pieces. I'm probably not going to level this up. I'm probably not going to level this up. But if you're just farming the golden troop and you have nothing, you of course you should level this up, especially if you're not at your crit threshold, then you really want to start leveling things like this is only a one liner crit, but it had two other useful substats and it rolled pretty much all into crit damage. This ended up being very good. I actually need more really good emblem pieces to get my Singcho's crit rate up. So for me, I'll be locking. I, I don't have any because I've leveled them up, right? I would be locking most of my emblem of Zerd Fates pieces because I don't have enough em really good emblem sets. There's too many characters that need emblems. So I'm I'm leveling up everything for the emblem set right now. Anything that has potential, I'm leveling it up to see if it's good or not. But for Crimson Witch, it has to be a godlike piece for me to level up because I already have two insane Crimson Witch feathers and I don't need any more Crimson Witch. So I, I'm not leveling any more Crimson Witch. Same with Gladiator, right? Like obviously I've locked these double crits, but like it's almost begrudgingly because I already have after playing for so long, I've got really good Gladiator pieces already. So I'll level these up eventually, but I'm not in a rush because I already have such good pieces. Same with these. I already have good Wanderer's True pieces, but because I'm just starting to farm um, the Husk of Opulent Dream set, because I'm about to get a bunch of Geo characters, I have more locked. I'm going to be trying out more of these and leveling up more of these because I, I only have like one or two good pieces right now. Your standards depend on what you need and what you have. So that's how I determine what I level up versus what I fodder. Now, what do I save for later as potential? I know a lot of people, including myself, foddered some, holy mokes, I need to level this. Oh, what the heck? Um, I know a lot of people foddered, you know, their defense goblets or whatever. And now it's getting to the point where, you know, with Farina, you know, defense goblet kind of good now. Attack goblet potentially, you know, kind of good for a lot of situations. So how, how do you future proof your artifacts for the future? And the most important thing is that you look at, you really, fo you, I like to, for, by and large, lock things that I think I might need in the future. First of all, obviously that's, that's obvious. But what about other things? Like I, I like to, to lock potentially rare things and also things that match the set. So what do I mean by that? Like this was a healing bonus set. If you're farming in a, a healing bonus set or like a supportive set, oftentimes support characters, they need energy recharge, they need crit rate. And so I'm going to be looking to, you know, if I'm, if I'm farming some sort of supportive set, I'm looking for ER, right? I'm looking for healing bonus. I'm looking for crit rate. I'm looking for healing bonus with ER. That's what I'm looking to lock. But we, we really can't predict what the future is going to hold for Genshin. So like, like I, I've locked this, right? This seems wacky healing bonus with double crit and ER, but I'm not going to keep too, too many of these. And 
I'm not gonna worry if I end up farm if I end up foddering it. Like, yeah, so I might have had been, been had an easier time building my Shen Yun or Jean if I locked more of my attack percent pieces. But the thing is, oftentimes these new characters will use new sets anyways. And oftentimes if they do use unconventional sets, like they don't use crit rate and crit damage, they're generally easier to farm for. Like, yeah, it's annoying maybe if you if you got rid of all your attack percent pieces and now you don't have any. But the reality is it's easy to find the attack percent piece as opposed to the right elemental damage bonus with a double grit crit. So I generally like to give myself a break when trying to predict the future with that sort of stuff and focus the most on, you know, could I see if, I, if I'm looking at a particular set, like the Geo set, could I see, you know, say I find an, eight, yeah, well, an HP percentage double crit, could I see an HP scaling Geo character? Probably not. So if this had just one crit line, I would fodder it. But because it has the double crit line, that's sort of rare. So I'm going to keep it. That's kind of my mindset personally, but you're just predicting the future. So that's, that's hard to do. So that's how I determine when i when i lock artifacts it's really based on what i have i think the different tiers are if you're if you're not even hitting your crit rate and crit damage minimums you know lock anything with crit and see if it'll roll into it because you need to hit those minimums if you already have your minimums then you want to look for things with with you know at least three useful substats before you start rolling or something or use or they're useful substats that you really need now what about when you start enhancing it when do you stop for me it's basically i just compare it to what i already have right right now I don't have a second a second uh, husk set. I would like either a second husk set for my albedo to go along with Ito, or I would like a golden troop set for my albedo. And I'm basically just farming both until until I I get one or the other. And I really need like another circlet. And let's go through these and see. So healing bonus, deep wood. I could see like right now Baiju and this could be good for Yao Yao already, but like Baiju doesn't, he wants HP, not really healing bonus, but I could totally see like a dendro damage, a dendro character wanting deep wood and being a healing bonus character. Like I could see this being useful. So I'm gonna keep that one locked. Attack, double double crit, I'm gonna keep that. That's a good potential off piece or a main piece. Uh, electro damage bonus with crit damage and attack, two useful substats, I'm gonna keep it. Pyro damage bonus with one crit damage, HP and EM. This is three and a half useful substats, like flat HP I would count as a half useful for someone like Hu Tao. So I don't have the resources to level this right now, but I'm gonna keep it because it has pretty good potential, especially if I'm using Mari Shise on Hu Tao when I don't even need crit rate. This has like some real good potential. Um, HP with double crit. Yup. Uh, because we have lots of HP scalers these days. Um, Flowers of Paradise Lost, EM, ER, HP, perfect potential for Kuki. Just don't have enough XP. I'm just like you guys. I'm starving on artifact XP. We'll talk about that later too. Um, EM on a four liner, EM main stat, EM main stat. Um, this piece, crit damage with attack. So obviously we'd be hoping for crit rate. This would be like for our child if we wanted to do a four piece Nymph Dream. Or if for some reason Nymph's Dream was really good, we have an HP Sands with double crit. So I'm kind of keeping these as sort of like a pair. You know, if there's some future Hydro character that wants Nymph's Dream. Unfortunately, like Nymph's Dream just kind of kind of a sussy artifact set. So I'm not even sure if I want to keep it. But the only reason I'm keeping this circlet is because I have this Sands. And like maybe I want to go for the set at some point. I don't know. Double crit, double crit Dendro, crit attack, EM Goblet, crit. Like I keep a lot of goblets on the Marishi Say because you never know what we're we're gonna have in the future that will work with Farina. Like I could easily see an EM scaler that works with Farina that we want. Crit, I could pyro damage, obviously. HP for Novalette, obviously. HP circlet can actually be good with Novalette. I probably am not gonna go HP circlet, so I'm actually gonna fodder this. Why? Because I already have a fully built set for Novalette, and I already have a crit damage and a crit rate circlet. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna go for an HP circlet on him personally. Um, I potentially might go for another, another uh, flower though. So that's why I'm keeping all these flowers. I just don't have the XP to try these out yet so that's why i'm leaving them i don't mind that this is a four line uh with crit damage if it rolls into all crit damage and any one of these other stats great if it goes into multiple then it's over for me attack percent sands i just got a baller attack percent sands and now i have two good attack percent sands i really don't need any more attack percent sands so even though this has potential i'm gonna i'm gonna strong box it because my other two are just good enough i'm never gonna want to upgrade them anymore um energy recharge maybe we'll need that crowd damage i could see a skill 
focus crowd damage. I could see skill focus power damage. Um, this is a bit harder to justify a low roll crit damage or a low roll crit rate. You can have anywhere between a 2.7 and 3.5, I think it is, something like that. Uh, crit rate, crit rate piece, um, pretty hard to justify. I think if it was Marishi say I would keep it probably, but as is, I don't think so. Another HP. Actually, no, these are good for Farina herself. I forgot she gives herself HP. So that's why, I, that's why I kept these. My bad, my bad. Sorry guys. Hopefully you didn't flatter your HP goblets already because Farina herself gives herself a ton of damage bonus. So these are actually good for HP herself. So that's why, that's why I kept those. Defense. Yeah, well, fine. We'll keep it. Attack. It's kind of tough because this would all be, have to both use with Farina this one i'm gonna fodder crit rate with crit damage we'll keep it crit damage with crit rate we'll keep it um we're looking to build a defense set of this so i'm actually going to keep all of these right now and i already tried my luck at my defense one and the rest of these you know hp is for farina the rest who knows these ones we already talked about it's, it's these ones are tough like maybe i'll want to run this set on shen yun with zhao one day so i'm keeping my attack main stat and she wants er so it makes sense right i'm keeping attack and er for the for that for that potential situation this one just is double crit. So is this one. Healing bonus, like again, could be a Shen Yun or could be just a healing character in general if Shen Yun wants attack. I like to see the crit rate here because it's, uh, you know, for Fav or something. So I'm keeping a few of these. I'm not, I didn't farm this set that much, so... I really need to level this. Um, I could see like a potential, like I think this set is like decent for Ito. So maybe I even do roll that, see what happens. Hydro damage bonus. I like to keep at least two substats for goblets. So, you know, crowd damage bonus with crit damage because of Blizzard Strayer, crit damage, is, I'm okay with just one substat. Animo with ER and crit damage, that's okay to keep. Attack with double crit, attack with double crit, defense with double crit, electro damage. Always, always hungry for electro damage. I think we already have, this one doesn't even have a good second substat unless there's like an HP electro damage scaler, but I'll take the rest. I have a lot of goblets already. Hydro damage. My god, hydro damage bonus goblets aren't that good. So that's why I'm going to, I'm going to leave this one locked and I'm going to try it out. If it goes all into crit or crit attack ER, that could be good potentially. Um, animal damage. You never know. Could be a hero piece. Goblets. I'm a little bit more lenient towards because they're harder to get really good pieces for. HP sands, double crit. EM sands, double crit. Attack. I already have really good sands already and attack with just one crit line. I'm gonna fodder that. EM, obviously we're keeping EM uh, VV pieces. That's obviously a thing that we do. Hydro damage bonus with EM attack, crit damage. Who knows? Yeah, that seems fine. I Like I said, my hydro damage bonus goblets are kind of cope. So I have, I'm keeping an eye out for those. Attack and crit rate. Who knows? Could be a good could be a good one. At least we've got two out of three good substat. Power damage, two good substats. We'll keep it for now. Uh, double crit, double crit. Healing bonus, double crit. Um, I already have a good elemental mastery sands and so I'm, and I'm, I don't think I'm going to go for any more Wanderers. So we'll we'll get rid of that one. HP double crit, we'll keep it. EM, we'll get rid of this one too. I already have too many. Defense, should roll this. I think I I think I could use an off piece somewhere. Because I'm just like you. I'm I'm lacking in uh, in XP. Ugh. So, like, I'm going to keep this in case it's a good off piece. But on set, like, Crimson Witch is a really outdated set right now. Like, it's pretty much not worth farming for anyone. PSA, don't farm Crimson Witch. Mario Chisse is just better. Like, for your Hu Tao, for whoever. For Delu, Crimson Witch is dead. I don't have, I'm going to keep all of these pieces right now because I don't have a set at all. Vidra damage bonus, only one stat line. We're going to trash that. My Shimano pieces are like not that good. So I, I kind of want to keep this, but it's a low roll, only two stat. Not going to keep it. EM, I will keep. Attack. We're going to get rid of this. We already have an attack. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys, not just for like watching me what specifically I throw away and keep, but I'm walking you through the mindset so you can do the same and decide, do I already have this? Do I need this? Does this have potential? That's basically what you want to walk through for yourself right crit damage i'm always hankering for good circlet so even even though these are like crappy crappy substats maybe the last one rolls crit rate maybe it goes every time into crit rate i need emblem circlets that are really broken i don't have any so i'm keeping it keeping it just in case keeping it just in case keeping it just in case keeping it keeping it i don't have that like emblem is like my most desired set overall um i this pains me but you know whatever what it is electro damage bonus um it doesn't have it only has one good stat so i'm not going to keep it uh we're going to keep husk for now because i'm still working on on the set and then that's all so this is everything let's do our mystic offering let's see what we can get and then we'll go into level things up hydro damage bonus like i said i need more hydro damage electro damage we just foddered one exactly like that um nope that's bad that is also bad and that is bad as well if i was brand new and i was like here's the thing if this was my first husk set then i might actually keep this especially if 
you already have like i mean who knows we'll actually keep this like i said um i'm building a second husk set and i don't have i don't have a circlet for it yet it's between what do i get first a second husk set or um a second uh or like a good basically i just need a good defense sands for golden troop that's basically all i need so it's possible that i get a second house set first maybe we've got a double crit with <laughs> it's only roll into defense so far that's what we're going with um this actually has a ton of crit rate let's see like this is a kind of a weird piece like it's rolled into crit rate let's see what happens when we take it to uh to its conclusion em oh my god i'm gonna keep this because it's a yunjin piece um right she wants the crit rate and she wants the er but and the defense but that, that's sad it's too bad uh let's look at that dendro damage piece that looks good when should you stop because the other question was right when do you stop leveling and when and, and give up on a piece and the, and the question and the answer is it depends on your alternatives i think the best example is at least for me where was it this piece this was so sad it only rolled one into crit damage and it was a four line start so this is like an awful tragedy of a piece this was for my wanderer but the reality is it's an onset goblet with three useful rolls and I needed the crit. So what do they say? This is three useful substats. You know, like it's it, maybe it's not a maybe it's not a bad objective standard after all, right? It looks tragic. You would expect me to fodder this back, but it's an onset goblet. So I'm gonna keep an onset goblet and it's still my best piece right that for for his set would i have preferred it roll into something else yes but because of the rarity of the piece i'm gonna keep it if this was a feather or, or flower no way where was that dendro that dendro damage piece al Haytham's about to get a glow up this one crazy let's see if there's any pieces we have that we don't need that are bad i'm gonna tell you how dead crimson witch is i mean this piece isn't that good to begin don't do this at home so we got one em one attack and two crit damage not ideal but we're gonna take it one more because because another crit damage or crit rate okay so three point so we got this is pretty good this is 12 this is 13 this is a 43 so it's a so to find um crit value you double the crit rate and add it to the crit damage so you double 6.6 .6, that's 13.2 um 34 point 35 so this is 35 crit value that's one way to count this piece or you could add the useful substats so this is three rolls of crit damage two rolls of crit rate it's five you useful roles but the most important thing more important than all of that is how does it compare i'm currently using an onset 22 crit value so this is obviously a much bigger crit value piece but the one he's using is onset so it's going to be hard to justify it what's it like compared to my other pieces uh it's better it's worse and probably hard to say whether it's better or worse than that overall i'm a little bit like oh but i, I totally missed that this is a dendro damage bonus goblet so the em is actually a really good roll so this basically dumpsters my old off piece that i had right it's got a little bit less em so it's got one it's it, it doesn't dumpster it's got one more roll one less roll of em and one more roll of crit one and a half more rolls of crit so it's a better piece i can probably justify getting rid of this other piece now if i need it so what i'm basically saying here guys is if you're if you're not picking up what i'm throwing down it's that you need to base your artifact standards for locking and rolling based on what you need and based on what you have hopefully this was helpful i'm running out of artifact exp me too um artifact farming roots if you want me there's videos on youtube you can look them up if you want to see me do a video trying these out and seeing if it's worth your time subscribe and let me know in the comments i probably will do this video regardless but if you want to push me over the edge and see the video come out sooner subscribe down below and put a comment down below that you want to see me do this video i really want to do this video um i'd like to try it out i've never done the farm artifact farming route i'd love to see how fruitful it feels um like if i just go through the overworld and farm everything how hard does it feel how much time does it take for a new person and what do we actually get out of it so i'm running out of artifact xp look into some artifact farming roots um it just be like that so true so true jello it'd be like that um higher standards so I don't know if higher standards is quite the right thing to say. When you're first farming artifacts and you don't have anything and you're leveling everything, yeah, you're gonna run out of artifacts right away all the time. So that's why, because you need to start building up that base. And that's why I really recommend only going to 16 before you have sets. Like, okay, before you take anything to 20, get artifacts on all your eight characters for your first two teams and get sets on all of them to plus 16 before you take anything to plus 20. That will help. Then 
whenever you're leveling up a new artifact, you're trying to look for upgrades, right? You're trying to look for things that are improvements on your current build to make it better. And so that's what I mean by higher standards is you keep raising your standards so that you don't end up with a bajillion artifacts to try out. Like I have what I would consider like a good amount. I don't have pages and pages of unleveled artifacts because I bit because I base what I have unlocked off of what I need. Does that make sense? And also I think it's okay to use five star artifacts as fodder if you're you if you if you need fodder fodder like if you really don't have enough artifacts it's okay to use five star artifacts as fodder i think it's totally fine i think over time you will trend towards strong boxing being a way better value so in general like work you want to you'll eventually get to that, that point but in the beginning these might be much better value used as fodder i've used mine as fodder i don't i almost never use them as fodder anymore unless i'm really impatient but you should use them as fodder if you feel like you need um also if you're low on fodder it's actually a really good value well it's a decent if you don't if you're not low on mora and you're not low on books it's a good value to use but you are low on fodder it's a good value to use the teapot to get some fodder that's totally good it's actually the highest resin value if you were going to fodder your five star artifacts it's a good resin value to do that but i recommend you know farming more artifacts if you have not enough xp you need to run more domains eventually if you run domains you will get xp and if you don't take artifacts always to level 20 and you stop at 16 until you kind of have a base then this will that will help that will help you as well so when to stop leveling we've talked about this obviously already but standards goals versus what you currently have flower feather versus stands goblet circlet i pretty much covered this already you know what what are your what are your goals for that i i really think it's just based on what you currently have and what do you currently need that's really all what it's based on in my opinion does this still have a potential to be an upgrade if you don't got nothing if you don't got nothing then this is a good then this is still good if i already had if, what now that i already have this right i have this as my baseline standard so you compare the potential of that artifact to what you already have could it be better then i keep rolling is it dead is it worse than what i already have there you go how do i know if it's better or not compare the substats have you hit your minimum crit threshold then does it have better substats there's also this thing called the artifact optimizer for genshin you can use this to perfectly figure out um if your artifact is an upgrade and there's even videos here so check that out when am i personally done with the character's build so if i'm building a dps because we've been mostly focused on dps right if we're focused on a nilu it's hp 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 right this is not rocket science you know we don't need a guide for this it's em 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 um someone asked by the way if flowers of paradise lost is worth it over gilded dreams the answer is no no the 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 damage is not worth this is this is like some super inefficient domain i just did it because like i kind of simp for kooky so that's that's why but overall gilded dreams is just way better what was the question distraction how do i know when a character is done depends on how much i love that character um my general guideline is so if we look at alhytham my general guideline is correct main stats so em dendro damage crit rate crit damage and then i personally look for about a 200 crit value that's what i look for i'm not saying that's right what i look for um and then if i have less than a 200 crit value or if it's like on the lower end of 200 then i look for lots of other useful substats so we got some er that's good got some attack that's decent got some lots of crit rate got some nothing but it's on set got some attack that's decent not that much em but we still got our dendro resonance we still got nahida's buff we got i would like a bit more er it is what it is but we're in playing with Nahi, that's not a big deal. That's sort of where I like to where I like to stop. Um, if characters give you a lot of bonus, so Nahida gives herself crit rate. Um, so I'm not as worried about the crit rate here because it goes up. So I'm not, you know, I'm not doing worried. I'm not worried about it. She's already pretty good. But like for Wanderer, he's a hyper carry. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I do want to see him, you know, bit 205 crit value. 205 crit value with a bunch of useful substats. No useful substats. No useful substats. ER. Okay, this one only has like one useful substat other otherwise. But really, that's not what. I'd recommend. I just like to see. Obviously, I'm using the wrong left. Now I have to re. I forgot. I have to refarm for my wanderer because now he's using cash flow supervision, and I'm like pretty much overcapping on crit rate. So I need to. Oh no! Now I use. Uh, that's right. I use a crit damage circlet now. There we go. Yeah, there it is. The 200 and 207. I've been infected with the crit brain rot. Right. I don't recommend you be like me. I like to see like so you double the crit rate. That's 60 plus 140. That's 200. I like to see over 200 crit value. But if I don't have over 
200 crit value, but I have a ton, but I still have a nice crit stat line, like at least 70, 160, something like that is what I like, is what I personally like to see. Like my Yelan, I think she does have over 200 though. What's this? 670, four plus, yeah, it's over good. But I can probably, you know, we got some HP, we got some HP, we got some HP. This is a pretty good build, right? We got some HP, we got some attack, useless. So that's what I like to do. I like to go for minimum 200 and try and get as many useful sub stats on top of that as I can, whether that be extra crit subs or other subs or other really good sub stats. Obviously the primary thing is, do they have enough ER? If there's someone like Shangling or Hu Tao, do they have at least 150 elemental mastery, right? This is a little bit low, but at least her HP is higher. So maybe this is good now. Do any of these have crit damage and EM? This one does, this one does. Let's see if, let's see if we can get, let's see if we can get this one, this one locked in. Cause we just, wait, this one's dead. So let's try, can we get an upgrade with EM and crit damage? Oh, gross. Um, so now is where we put the, put the test. Does this, this is a two low rolls, really sad. Do, but does it have potential to beat this one? So it's never gonna beat it in crit damage. But if I get a final max roll in crit damage, could it still be better? It could be almost 20 and it has two rolls. So that's, you know, two and a half good rolls because they're such low rolls, uh, plus two rolls of elemental mastery. So it could have four and a half good rolls, whereas this one had four crit damage. It could technically still be a technical upgrade, especially since I have so much crit damage already. So let's see if it can go into crit damage. It went into EM. Interesting. I mean, it might actually be better, right? Because now we actually have 200 EM. Our crit damage is already still super high. It's still sort of disappointing because the crit damage rolls were so low. Like this looks like crit rate rolls. Yikes. But technically this is an upgrade, right? That's the funny part because our build has lots of crit, not a lot of EM. Let's see about this one. All right. Can we get an upgrade in this one? All into defense. This one's a no. Any more with EM? No more with EM, but this one has HP. This one has HP. So let's try this one. If we can get it all into crit and HP, maybe we go back to San, uh, EM Sands. Let's see. Can we do it? One into everything. No, one into everything is not going to cut it. Let's try again. Uh, this one has HP and crit damage. It could also roll crit rate. Could also roll EM. Rolling the Here we go. What can we get? What can we get? Oh, double bonus. Uh, attack, crit damage, and defense. If the last one's crit damage, is it an upgrade? No, I don't think that. I don't think so. Oh, no, it, it's already fully upgraded. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Really not an upgrade. But we got the double enhancement. So we win still because it was a free. It was a free upgrade because we got the double enhancement. So you'll love to see that. Um, Which one do we keep? 20 crit damage. This one might have more useful rolls than this one. 3 EM, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. They're both the same. We'll keep the EM one since I was using it right now. Um, HP and crit damage. Could be. Could be better. Let's see. Okay. This might be the upgrade we wanted. So this gives us a bunch, a bunch of HP, right? Where I got a bunch of HP. Now we can switch our elemental mastery or our HP sands to that elemental mastery sands. Anyways, I'd have to do some testing to see if this is really an upgrade, but hopefully you're seeing the vision. You're seeing the process. Um, my crit, my other way that I look at this is, you know, what other sources of crit am I getting? Am I getting crit weapon? We already talked about that as well. Is, am I using my should say then my crit, my crit is going to be like my crit standards are going to be lower. Like this is not 200 crit value, right? Because Mari say gives you so much crit. So I'm personally not worried as much about the crit being a, you know, 200 crit value because we double the crit rate. That's 101 plus this it's 90, it's 195 and not 200. I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about balancing the other stats because I get so much crit rate from this and I'm personally using a crit weapon and this is a five star character. So they have a crit ascension. So yeah, it depends. It depends. It depends. It depends. Uh, whatever is lower and need for your character is better, right? Yeah, this is supposed to be a sub plot, a sub point of this one whichever you're lacking in and needed, right? If I'm lacking in EM, then I want more and I need it. If I'm lacking in HP, that's what I need. Use the R optimizer if you're not sure. HP versus defense for survivability. A lot of people are asking this, if I get HP rolls on like my attack scaler, so like if I'm using Raiden, is it better to have HP or defense rolls? Um, it doesn't matter. Like defense is technically better because reducing damage and st strengthening your shields and is technically better than increasing your HP, but it really doesn't matter. You really, on the only thing you want to consider is how much damage your DPS is doing. Um, and if you're using a defensive character like Zhongli for shields, you just want to consider what their shield scales on, which is HP. So in that case, so attack defense or HP globa, etc., versus an elemental damage bonus. It's that, tr it's that uh, square again.
again, right? It's the rectangle thing again. We're back to we're back to surface area, whichever um, whichever you don't have more of. So if I'm using ride in on a Farina team, attack percent might actually be better. If I'm using ride in otherwise, electro damage bonus is going to be better. Ride in even is is not that good of an example because attack and electro damage are pretty close. You can get away with it, but like Yolan used with Farina, HP goblet without Farina, hydro damage bonus goblet. Novalet gets so much all by himself that he wants. Oh my god. <laughs> that he wants an HP goblet already, right? Farina gives so much damage percent that you prefer the other stat often for your DPS. However, I still generally just go with the um, the elemental damage one, even for characters I use with Farina. Why? Because I often play my characters in multiple teams and I don't want to switch back and forth. But I understand But if you want to optimize, then use the Genshin optimizer, right? And start to learn it for yourself. So it depends how much other sources of elemental damage bonus you're getting exactly. High roll and low roll. So I've talked a bit about high roll and low roll right you know this is 3.9 that's a high roll of crit rate 5.4 is a low roll of crit damage 2.7 is the lowest like crit rate each roll that you get into a crit rate can be between 2.7 and 3.9 crit damage is between like 5.4 and 7 point something i don't remember i didn't know it when i see it all of these are low 7.0 i think it's 7.4 oh 7.8 there it is yeah so if you get all high rolls and or all low rolls it can make a difference for your overall artifacts but i generally just ignore it i look at the final stat line and that's all that matters you can't like there's already enough rng before you consider high rolls and low rolls and yeah like technically it does matter like in this case where you know 3.8 times 3 is oh 10.5 so maybe this is oh yeah 10.5 yeah exactly 3.8 oh no 3.8 times 5 is 11.4 and 2.7 times 3 is 8.1 so this is actually not that bad oh this is crit rate so this is 5.4 plus 5.4 so this is really really awful right so okay 5.4 say four rolls of minimum crit damage is 21 7.8 times 4 four rolls of max crit damage is 31.2 so it's like there's like a 30 percent variance overall though you're usually not going to get so lucky that you get all high rolls or so unlucky that you get all roll rolls i generally ignore but it can matter uh, when you look at a final stat line um, make sure you lock your good exile instructor pieces how do you know what's good or not generally i look for crit rate in er because that's kind of the hardest things to get like for instructor um the this main stat's always going to be er when you use instructor because you're going to use a five star stat piece but for these I look for crit rate to proc Favonius and then I look for ER subs and same with instructor. That's not to say you're always going to use those, but that's what I like look out for. Did I accidentally fodder it? My instructor hat? Don't tell me I foddered my instructor hat. Oh no, that's right there. Whew. But yeah, see 8.4 crit rate. That's pretty good. Like I don't have an, a crit rate main stat one. I should keep an eye out, but yeah, that's pretty decent. So that's what I look for. I don't really pay attention to anything else because like nothing else matters on the current roster of characters we have. It's just crit rate to to proc Favonius and ER to get your burst up. Strong box versus farming domain. When should you do which? Uh, I think my first wit artifact video talked about this quite a lot. The only thing I would add is that the Mari Shise, um golden troop domain is like way more efficient than it was when I made that video. I put a pin comment in that video, but that's just something for you to know. It's really e damn efficient. It's so good. How to properly farm artifacts. Aim for one character at a time or just roll a good decently enough piece. Once again, this one is really good. Pick your favorite teams. Pick pick the right domain farm to level 16 focus first on main stats then get your crit baseline maybe i should write this out artifact bible one um pick pick your two teams identify artifact set goals don't be afraid of using two piece two piece for non-essential sets get correct main stats for all characters level up only to level 16 three establish crit baseline for your main characters for your main dealers that need it 60 120 100 for low 60 120 for medium 70 140 plus for high end max out additional adjust for crit weapons a extension set accordingly once you have this baseline consider crit no better or worse than other useful substats establish er baseline make sure necessary characters can burst every rotation establish crit baseline establish other stat baseline 150 em for vaporize for example remember when leveling artifact don't be afraid to use five stars as fodder if you need 
fodder more than new artifact at that moment. Be afraid. Don't be afraid to use teapot resources to get fodder. Remember, baselines are relative to your standard. This is mostly a warning guideline to not wait, to not ignore import that in favor or in spite of it. When deciding to lock artifact, consider if it has potential to be better than your alternatives or if it has good potential synergy with the set it is part of. When leveling artifact, consider whether it has the potential to be an upgrade compared to what you have while maintaining. If it can be an upgrade, keep going. If not, stop. Don't be afraid, keep at level 16. Too many artifacts in storage are are just wasted. Either decide to strongbox or level or fodder. All is good. All of these are good and potential useful but hoarding too many gets you nowhere I think that I think that's pretty good crit ratios are a pain hell yeah they are but remember remember this is the end game there's no race there's no rush relax Why is it worth it to farm versus farming for talents? Talents are expensive, but guaranteed upgrades. Sometimes you need better artifacts. Hard to say. Um, Generally, I, I give like talents you will need to do eventually. So if you want to do your talents, that's fine. I don't recommend crowning before getting good artifacts. If you want to take them to level eight, especially is very cheap. Level nine is quite a bit more expensive and crowning is hella expensive. So that's generally where I kind of, I draw the line. Like obviously you don't want to min max artifacts before crowning. Like at this, like I would, okay, here's Here's what I would say. Establish these baselines. Establish like the first baseline, like the 5100, around the time that you're going to level seven talents. This goes kind of with level eight talents. This goes with level nine talents. And anything that beyond that goes to crowning. That's kind of how I like to think of it. It's like a sliding scale. What are the three most universal sets that a player should have? There's no universal sets. Um, it depends on what teams you're building. Establish your teams, establish the most efficient sets, then go from there. I, I would break it down again, but I, the videos are going to be hella long and I already break Break it down here. Pick your characters and try and pick synergistic domains that support those characters. What factors into attack versus EM for elemental reaction dealers? Vaporize and gaming. How do I balance attack or EM? Is there a golden ratio? Basically, I know like it depends, it depends, it depends, it depends, blah, blah, blah. But you want to aim for 100 to 200 EM as a minimum for vaporized characters, preferably towards 200 plus. Any more than, than that is still good, but it takes away from potential HP or potential attack if you're looking at me or gaming. Um, it takes away from potential crit, but you definitely don't want to go less than 100. Ideally, 150, 200 is still great. Um, it's it's again, it's that it's that surface area versus perimeter. Most resin efficient domain probably got to be the new one, right? If you have Farina, it's the new it's the new Mario Chase versus Mario Chase Golden Troop one. But it depends on what character is using. The most resin efficient domain is the one that can that can build multiple of your characters at a time. Emblem still could be emblem. Is it worth investing into a four star artifact in early game? Yes because you can always if it has a good main stat especially er because you can always fodder it it's not that bad to refodder you like you lose like 20 30 percent of the xp not that bad it's worth it um there it is i think this is one of the best artifact guides on youtube after this the artifact bible we have it right here um you know artifact bible page one page two page three you can screenshot it if you want I did want to add one more final thing. Vid Milo made a video on when are your artifacts good enough? And I've watched it. It's a really great video. Definitely give that a watch for additional info into the more noodly bits of Substat. But I also wanted to talk about artifacts don't exist in just a vacuum. Like, how do you know when your artifacts are good enough? It's when you're satisfied with the performance of your characters. And the thing is, the performance of your characters not only depends on your artifacts, but also the teams you build. So if you're struggling with teams, make sure you watch, you know, my character guide to make sure you actually have a good team for your characters. Make sure you're using a good team versus the abyss that you're fighting in. Consider whether or not you have five star weapons or not, whether you have constellations or not, as those things rise and lower the standard of artifact quality that you need to hit your goals. Consider that you don't need as high goals if you don't want a 36 star as if you just want to clear. So I'm going to highly recommend my videos, build better characters, the most five most important tips for Genshin Impact Combat, and my ultimate team building guide as well.
well. Because like I said, artifacts don't just exist in a vacuum. You have to put all this stuff together. And I would also recommend if you're running a specific team, search up Abyss Clears, right? Hu Tao Abyss Clear. And, you know, look up, find one that uses the same, uh, the same characters that you're using and see what they're doing to clear the Abyss, because that can really help make sure that your gameplay is up to par as well. So that's it. Take care. Bye for now.